Our next guest says the recent looting in stores in this country is a, quote, kick in the gut for small business as they try to reopen in the wake of the COVID pandemic. Uh, joining us this morning is Dave Dodson. He's professor of management at Stanford University, also an investor and advisor to more than 30 small businesses. Dave, welcome back. Good to see you again. Likewise. Uh, we've talked to you and a lot of small businesses about uh, the impact of the pandemic on business, especially those that didn't have access to capital like large public companies. Now we have these uh, these riots and the looting. And mm -hmm. as you point out, there's no government program to help compensate for that. That's right. There's no PPP for the economic disruption that's happening from the social side. But here's the thing. The president's economic team has to get out of the bunker and start, start walking up and down Main Street because what they'll see is that business owners went from having a closed Main Street to a boarded up Main Street. The recovery that we're all hoping is going to happen right around election time depends on one thing, which is jobs. And here's the problem with jobs that people are missing, I think, in Washington, D.C., is that what happened in March, April and May was not just people getting laid off as a result of COVID, but there was this massive sort of right sizing that's happened among the business community because business owners have figured out that they can do the same or more with less resources. So that baker has figured out that he can make the same number of loaves of bread with 12 people as 14 people. So even if the economy were to come back, jobs are not going to come roaring back like that. But here's the second thing is when you're driving down the street and all you see is plywood, that affects your view of the future. And when people think about hiring more people or capital spending, they're thinking about what is 2021, 2022 look like? And there's so much uncertainty as a result of what's happening with the George Floyd protests that are happening, which are not obviously just about George Floyd. They're about a systemic racism that's happening in the country. That creates uncertainty. And when there's uncertainty, that baker is not going to go buy that extra mixer. And that baker who thought, well, maybe I can get by with 12 employees, maybe 10. Right. So is it too glib then to say or suggest that these businesses leave cities, leave urban centers? I mean, the business owners have to make a living, too. Oh, of course. And I don't think our cities are going to dry up. I don't think anybody realistically thinks the cities are drying up. This is an issue of how the pace of the economic recovery and what's going to happen is we're, we are going to recover. OK, but we're not going to recover at anywhere near the pace that people think because of the forces that I just told you about, which are all about jobs. And by the way, when you combine high unemployment, and, which, which leads to less consumer spending, with a massive amount of consumer debt that we've never seen before, you've got the twin effects of those two things are, are going to come together. And those are going to come together sometime around Q4, or Q1 of next year. Professor Dodson, it's Sarah. You're the PPP expert. Congress did last night pass some new changes, the flexibility to that program, allowing small businesses to, for instance, spend less of the loan money on payroll to uh, make the payroll uh, deadline last longer. How significant are these changes? Well, they should have been listening to our show two months ago, right? Because we were talking about that whole thing two months ago. They made two really significant changes, which are important. One is they extended it beyond eight weeks, which was fanciful to think that eight weeks was enough. And the second is that they ended this sort of nanny state where the PPP program said, we'll give you money, but you have to spend it in a precise exact way. We're not going to let you, the CEO or you, the business owner, decide how to spend it. And they relax those somewhat. So those are two significant changes and they'll be helpful. It's just that one of the reasons, by the way, that the second round of PPP is only about three quarters spent is business owners to some extent sort of threw up their hands and they said, these rules are literally changing by the week and I can't afford to take on this debt if I don't know if it's going to be forgiven or not. So while I applaud the Treasury Department for making these changes, it is really sort of nine weeks too late. And what about any deadlines coming due? I mean, how, how long does this ultimately run? For instance, watching, you know, in, in light of the unemployment numbers that we got today, another 1.8 million people filing unemployment claims, that bonus unemployment only lasts for what, another month? What, what deadlines do we have to watch as far as the small business loans? Well, so this is what goes to the point I was making earlier about uncertainty, because we don't know what's going to happen in July, August and September for exactly the points that you're talking about uh, unemployment benefits. Employers and people who need who would be out spending money are going to be much more cautious. So that goes back to the baker who's only going to hire 11 people instead of 14 people. So those three people aren't going to get a job. And because they think they might not get a job today, they're not going to be spending the kind of money that they would. So this is all contracting the economy. It will come back. The, you know, the sky is not falling, but it is not going to come back at the level that the president's economic advisors are telling everybody it will come back. 
I'm sure a lot of the folks that you advise have had to deal with uh, workers who they would like to bring back, but obviously are not coming back because of the benefits that they're getting right now. The labor secretary this morning says the idea of a bonus to encourage workers to go back to work is worth considering. Do you think it's worthwhile? Well, it's an interesting concept, and it's absolutely true. I mean, I remember sitting in on a call with a company that I'm involved in that was doing a pretty significant layoff, and the employees, oddly enough, thought that it was not such a bad deal because it turned out they were going to make more money the next day on unemployment benefits. So we do have that problem that's taking place. But this goes back to what I was saying about the sort of nanny state where we're going to try to manipulate people's behavior by saying, okay, well, we paid you a bonus to get laid off and now we're going to pay you a bonus to get back on. And by the way, you need to spend your money in a certain way on real estate and utilities. And, and all of this kind of hyper management of the economy is not helpful to business owners who are just say, look, give me a little bit of liquidity and I will get through this. I know how to run my lumber yard. You don't need to tell me how to run my lumber yard. Uh, nanny state is a good way to put it. At least a lot of our viewers uh, <laughs> think so. Um, Dave, thank you for that. We'll look forward to checking in with you again soon. Dave Dodson of Stanford.